we have got some shifts in our sky my friend we have got this eclipse season in full swing we've got mercury about to go retrograde we've got mercury changing signs oh we've got some things to talk about so let's dive in if you are new here, hey, 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 my friend, welcome. This is the Sidereal Astrology Forecast for the week of March 25th through, is it April 1st? March 31st? Oh my goodness, my friend, can you believe it? We are hitting the end of March. We are still rolling strong with Pisces season, but we do have eclipse season that is here. So we're going to talk about that in this video. We're also going to talk about our upcoming Mercury retrograde and some other shifts that are happening in our sky. So let's dive in. Again, my name is Danny. Danny Simoni, spiritual healer, intuitive astrologer, who talks about sidereal astrology, which is quite different than you will hear out with our tropical friends. I do cover Western sidereal astrology. There are a couple of different ways that we can look at our sky, my friend. Let me just say um, there is three main systems, tropical, sidereal, and there is Vedic. There is also nuances within that as well. But here we cover Western sidereal astrology, even though I do look at some of the others, just saying. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. Let me pull up our chart. And as I do that, I do want to let you know that this sidereal astrology forecast is also over on the new podcast, the Cosmic Mystic Podcast, my friend. If you haven't checked it out yet, I'm going to highly recommend you head on over there. Um, we have episodes twice a week. You'll see this sidereal astrology forecast as well as a second podcast episode that comes out uh, every week, every Thursday as well. So we might dive deeper into the new moon, into a full moon, into um, the shifts that are happening in the sky. Sometimes I have some of my amazing friends coming on. And sometimes there's just topics that I want to talk about, about life after awakening, managing <laughs> the 3D. Uh, and so come on over. You will also, if you are on the podcast and you want to see the charts or you want to see my funny faces, then come on over to the YouTube channel, Keeping It Real with Sidereal. And you can find uh, those there as well as so many past videos that I've done. I've had the channel for a while. So there's a lot of hypnosis and meditations on the channel as well. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> Let's dive in. We always want to check out and see where our sun is, since we are talking about sidereal astrology, which will be slightly different than we see with our Western tropical friends. Uh, here we go. Our sun is still in the zodiac sign of Pisces. We're right there at 11 degrees Pisces. So we're still hanging out in Pisces. Um, one of the things I do want to point out is that we have a couple of things happening in particular um, on the 25th here, the start of our week, we have our opposition and let me pull it out. Our opposition here to this, to the moon with this sextile over to Pluto. Now I talked a lot about this in our last episode on the podcast, but what I didn't talk about was the eclipse energy. So I talked about the full moon, but I didn't talk about the impact of the eclipses. And so what I will say with eclipse energy in astrology, eclipses are believed to be moments when we step into our fate and destiny. It's these events that we have where, you know, they align with the north and south lunar nodes. Now, the nodes are not planets. They are not asteroids. They are fixed points. They are mathematical points in relation to our moon. And so the nodes are really giving us the idea of 
our life path, our destiny, our soul's evolution in this particular lifetime. And so we have this beauty with the North Node, which is where we're headed, and then the South Node, which is our past, our past experiences, our strengths. And so I often find that when we can start exploring and acknowledging and embodying our natural strengths, our natural gifts, we are able to activate our North Node. And so eclipses give us that opportunity to step into that energy. So they are trying to push us <laughs> toward our path, breaking out of our comfort zone. So eclipses are known to be these big breakthroughs. They're, they're unpredictable. They shake things up in our lives, really directing us onto our path, directing us to where we're, where we're headed, where our soul wants to, to go. Right. And so it's a really potent time. The lunar eclipse is around the full moon. And the solar eclipse is around the new moon. So right now, right as we kick off this week, we are in the energy of our full moon lunar eclipse in Virgo. And so I did talk a lot about this in that in that episode. So I don't want to go into too much, but so I'd recommend to go listen to that episode. But here's the thing: Virgo and Pisces is what we're looking at. So there's a lot of energy with this particular eclipse season and this beginning here uh, of this two week period, which extends a little bit more than that. But we have this energy of endings. We're bringing things to an end. We're kind of wrapping things up and we're, we're allowing, the way I like to view it is, you know, I'm sending this energy off with the eclipse. Like, Okay, I'm done with this. I'm ready to I'm ready to step onto this new path. And so especially with the Pisces energy, this is kind of amplified here. And Virgo relating to our day-to-day, -day, our our routines, our habits, um how we are of service to others and just kind of like that day-to-day -day life, it really gives us that opportunity to look at those things and say what is not working in my day-to-day -day life? Where do I want to shift? What do I want to change in the day-to-day -day as it relates to me stepping even more into my path, my destiny, my purpose, my mission, what it is that I am here to do? So my friend, this is a really beautiful time. Now, I will hear a lot of people out there uh, talk about this is the time to do spells. This is the time to set intentions. This isn't the time to dot, dot, dot. My friend, um, you do you. <laughs> you do you. There is no this or that. I do not. I still set new intentions under the solar eclipse. I will do it this time as I always have. I don't, for me, it's not that big of a deal. It might be, there might be a little bit of a shift on how I word the intention, but this is really potent energy. Why would I not use it, right? So you figure out what works for you. If you're not feeling this erratic energy and you're like, yeah, it's too crazy for me. But here's the thing, that erratic energy is here to shake things up for us. If we continue doing the same things, what are we going to get? the same result. So we have to shift things up, change things to get a different result. So that's what this eclipse season is about. There is, you know, there's a lot of hoopla out there. I, you know, people like to hype things up and yes, I agree. It's a great energy. It's potent energy. And it really is basics is helping us get back to our path. And so there may be things that are removed. There may be things that maybe you didn't want removed. There may be things that are shaken up and you're like, why? This is what I actually want to do. But maybe my friend, just maybe it is shaking you up because there is something you are not quite seeing. Okay. That is what I want to say about eclipses. Let's move into our um, next kind of idea here is when we're looking at 
a couple of different things is we have, I want to talk a lot about mercury um, and in particular the mercury retrograde, but I do want to cover something really quick before we dive into that. And that is right here, this Venus. So we are wrapping up this uh, conjunction with Saturn and the sextile over here to Jupiter and Jupiter and Uranus. We've been talking about this the past few weeks. We're going to be moving into, and we'll see this happen right here in just a second, where that Saturn fell off, the Jupiter fell off, and Neptune came in. So right here on the 30th, we have, we actually had it move in on, yeah, on the 30th, we have Neptune conjunct Venus. And so Neptune and Venus, we have that really romantic kind of energy, that beauty, that uh, really like there's a lot of love, right, that comes through with the Venus energy. And then we've got Neptune, which is that really spiritual sign, that transcendent sign. There's uh, can be some uh, dreaminess here with uh, Neptune. So I want to say a couple of things on here is this energy is an opportunity for more compassion in your life, in particular in your relationships, especially with your partner, right? Your, your spouse, your loved one. There could be this, this energy of more compassion, more bonding uh, happening, more spiritual bonding in particular happening here. We um, can also see a little bit of difficulty getting motivated <laughs> with Venus and Neptune. You know, Neptune wants to like slow us down and dream us out. And so it can be like, yeah, I don't really want to work. I just want to kind of zone out and be creative and be in my flow. Right. <laughs> and so this can be, it can be a little bit harder to be motivated, right. To take action, to, to do something. So we might indulge a little bit more in our creativity or our hobby or listening to our favorite music or relaxing with a movie and just kind of chilling out. We might be drawn to more um, beautiful things, pleasing environments, really comforting and supportive environments and really trying to avoid any drama or any aggressive situations here. Our compassion is really high. Our empathy is really high. Our intuition is really high. Although I will say Mercury retrograde is about to happen and that can shift things up a little bit. The one um, aspect here about this conjunction, and this conjunction will be all the way through March, um, sorry, April 7th, is there is a risk for disappointment. So especially as we relate it to relationships. So if there has been a relationship, whether it's your personal relationship, your intimate relationship or close friendship, that is not the best relationship. We may see some disappointment here. We may see some, you know, it's as if the harsh uh, realities are being exposed to us. And so I kind of want to give you that as a you know, cautionary tale there, if anything does start to come up in the relationship, which generally speaking, it's pretty easy, pretty soft, pretty comforting, really compassionate. But if there has been some problems in the relationship or just the relationship has run its course, there may be some things that happen that kind of point some things out for you. So again, my friend, pay attention because this isn't happening just to happen. It's happening for a reason. It's my firm belief. All right, let's talk about Mercury. So Mercury is going to be moving into Aries. So it's going to be moving out of um, Aquarius, um, sorry, Pisces, and moving into um, Aries right here on the 26th. So on Tuesday, Mercury moves into Aries. Now, Mercury rules our communication, our thinking. Okay. Those are the two main things. It also rules the contracts, our short travel, our neighbor, neighborhoods, as well as siblings. Now with Mercury moving into Aries, things begin to get a little bit more direct, <laughs> a little bit more impatient, argumentative, hurried, combative, uh, blunt, honest, right? This, this thinking as well as communicating, it gets to get, it gets to be a little bit faster and speedier and just like wanting to get to the point. Like, I don't want to hear the long story. Just 
right? Reader's Digest version. going to date myself there, but Reader's Digest version. <laughs> right, let's cut to the chase. Let's get to the point. I don't need the long drawn out explanation here. Just get to it. Or you might find that even you are like quick, short, don't need to hear the story or don't want to share the whole story, just giving you like a bullet point. So if you're working with somebody and they're just like wanting the bullet points, <laughs> Don't take any offense. That's just what this time is. Or if you're getting, you know, responses in text and they're just like one word answers, like to the point, and you're like, where was the high? <laughs> yeah, don't be offended. This is just your communication might get a little bit more direct, a little bit more quick. Um, you know, I have to find myself sometimes, uh, you know, when I'm, I'm communicating is, I have to stop, pause myself, like write my text out and then go back and be like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's just, I am I can be very direct in my uh, communication and I just like get to the point, let's make a decision, let's move forward. And so I often have to like remind myself to like, oh yeah, go back and do that. Um, so we can definitely see this a little bit more with this particular um, transit as Mercury moves the through Aries. Now, Mercury is going to be in Aries for just a few days before it goes retrograde. And once it goes retrograde, it's going to move back through Aries into Pisces. So most of this retrograde period will be in the zodiac sign of Pisces. Let me show you what that looks like. So we're going to single out Mercury here. We see right here, there's a nice opposition to the moon when it goes into Aries. And so here it is, and it's making this square to Pluto, which is just deepening our thinking, deepening our interactions with people, uh, really wanting to get into more research, um, uncover things. And so there may be things that are more exposed, right? We just had that connection with the sun, and now we've got the square with um Mercury, which can definitely expose things. And so there definitely can be a little bit of a defensiveness happening. So pairing that with that Aries uh, energy, it, it, we could get a little, a little bit more argumentative and fighting back kind of warrior energy coming through in this next week. So I do want to kind of give you that as well. But here we go. Mercury's trucking along in Aries. And then right here on the second, we see Mercury goes retrograde. Those red numbers there, I'll zoom in here. All they simply are saying is that that planet has now gone retrograde. You'll see the little RX there, which stands for the retrograde. So we've got Mercury going retrograde right here in Aries, and it's at three degrees. Now, as we know, it appears to be moving backwards, right? You can see that it went to two degrees. It's going to go to one degree. And then we're going to see it pull back into 29 degrees Pisces. And it will continue moving through Pisces. You see, it keeps going back 26, 25. It'll continue to do that all the way through to the 25th of April. So Mercury will be retrograde starting on the 2nd, all the way through the 25th of April. So we've got this entire month, most, most of the month, where Mercury will be retrograde in Pisces, as we saw for most of that time, but it will kick off in Aries and then move into Pisces. So the energy moves from that very direct and aggressive, argumentative energy and then into Pisces, which is a little bit softer and gentler, empathetic, compassionate. Um, uh, it, the intuition, right, is a lot, is firing a lot um, easier, so to speak. And so this is really interesting because a Mercury retrograde, something that I want to say here, and I'll say this again next week because it's really important, is Mercury retrograde is nothing to fear. <laughs> there is nothing to uh, worry about, be scared about, um, have concern for. All the Mercury retro retrograde period is, is an opportunity for us to reflect. It's an opportunity for us to slow down and observe what is going on. It's as if we are taking the opportunity to see what is going along. It's like you're trucking along, you're trucking along, you're trucking along, and you're doing, doing, doing. And then all of a sudden, right, you get stopped. 
right? It's just as if you're like driving on the freeway and then all of a sudden there's traffic, right? You get paused and it's like, you gotta look, you like, it's almost like you wake up. Let me tell you, when I used to only do hypnosis, hypnosis was, I was a hypnotherapist or still am, I shouldn't say I was, I was a hypnotherapist, still am. And I would put people in trance. And one of the ways that I would talk about trance would be in reading a book, watching a movie, or driving a car. We actually go into a hypnotic state, into a trance when we're driving the car, especially on a long road trip where it's just a long road and there really isn't anything to see. You get into a trance. It's one of the reasons why my love and I will put affirmations on when we are driving on long road trips because we're reprogramming our subconscious mind. We'll listen to podcasts where that information is coming in. We're very careful of what is coming into our minds, especially when we're in a trance state. And so it's the same kind of idea where you're in that trance state and then all of a sudden, right, the traffic stops us and we have to like wait we, it's like as if we wake up right we wake up from the trance and we look around and we're like what's going on <laughs> right and you're trying to figure out is there an accident did the road get closed like what's going on right you're you're more alert and awake that's what the retrograde period is doing for us it's pausing us so we can look around and see what's happening so your computer <laughs> malfunctioning, let's just say, giving you challenges is not because your computer is messed up, not because you might have done something wrong, but it's making you pause for a moment. Your travel mishaps where your flight may be delayed, it's not because the airline screwed up. What if it is because you needed an extra hour? What if you needed that pause? My friend, Mercury retrograde is a really beautiful time to awaken us to what is going on in our life. So I want you to think about this period, this, this time to come inside and reflect, to come inside and see what is going on, to awaken to your environment and maybe it's the maybe the environment is great maybe it's not and maybe you've just been trucking along on that long road and now you've come to a stop my friend that is simply what is retrograde and what it's opportunity that we are given so use this time my friend <laughs> use this time to reflect. Um, in particular, we're going to look at the unconscious beliefs. We're going to look at the things that have not been working in our day-to-day -day life. We're going to look at the things that we're ready to bring to an end as if, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with doing the same thing. It's time for me to change my environment. It's time for me to invest in myself. It's time for me to invest in my business. It's time for me to invest in my team, right? It's time for me to step forward and take care of me. Pisces is all about looking at the deeper beliefs, it's the unconscious. It's what is hidden from us. And so this is a really good time because the Pisces season is when the unconscious becomes conscious. So we want to pay attention to those intuitive hits. We want to pay attention to the signs and to the triggers, right? Not that we're not always doing that, but even more so now because our unconscious is bringing things forward for us to resolve, to heal to shift, to transition <laughs> so that we can take the next steps on our journey. So use this period, my friend. Use this period to dive in. We have the, if you have not downloaded yet, the monthly Zodiac guidebook. I put a guidebook out every single month. And if I haven't said it, it is absolutely free. Inside it has the current season. It has what's going on that season. It's got dates in there for our full moon, our new moon. We've got weekly journal prompts to help you dive deeper and do some introspection. 
uh, for that particular week. It has mantras in there with, with for each week. Uh, we've also got a ritual that you can do using crystals or essential oils or any other number of things. There's always something good in there. So there's also a section on Mercury retrograde. So grab that guidebook. You can go to thepeaceteacher.com forward slash guidebook. It will be in our description below and in our show notes for the podcast. So you can go download that guidebook, my friend, get the information and, and sit with those questions, journal with them, meditate on them, use this period of introspection. Now in our next uh, forecast, I'll talk a little bit about how to use Mercury retrograde in your business and in signing contracts, because that is a big thing that comes up during the retrograde period. All right, my friend, that is it. That is what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you have enjoyed this episode as much as I have had sharing it with you. Let me know in the comments below what your takeaway is for today. And if you are on the podcast, come on over to Cosmic Mystic Podcast over on Instagram and let me know there. That is where we are having conversations. Okay, my friend, enjoy this time. Enjoy this week. Have a beautiful, beautiful one, and I'll see you next time. Bye.